I want you to see what I always do before the presentation begins. There are many things that can hurt a presentation. System crashes, not enough disk space, programs that do not run as they're supposed to run. But inevitably, these are all caused by human errors. There is, however, an incredibly simple remedy to stop these human errors. You start early, perhaps 20 minutes or so if possible, and warm up with the audience that has come in early. The best thing about the early warm up is that it warms you up too. It's a lot easier to start talking to two or three people than it is to start talking when everybody is there. Hello, I'm Teo Armour. I provide marketing and technical support to the Autodesk Distribution Network in Southeast Asia. Now, what am I going to do right at the beginning of a seminar, right when the show begins? I'm going to show you some of my best material first. As you can see, I've been running some material that uses logos, and I often do this. Usually, I show the logo of the customer that I'm visiting, or the logo of the distributor, or the dealer that is sponsoring my presentation. The customers love this. If I'm talking to a manufacturer, I may create an NC toolpath of their logo. In talking to an architect, I may make a plan in the shape of their logo. Okay? Now, in doing this, the customers are seeing a familiar corporate image, but in an entirely new way. I may show material that's not interesting to everybody. It may be too technical for some. It may be not technical enough for others. Okay? But when I show some of the magic right in the beginning, Okay, I can just feel the audience sit back in their chairs and relax. Okay, they're on my side, and they'll be on my side now for the whole presentation. Okay, so having established my credibility now, I must begin to transmit my objective. Okay, I must start getting my points across. So we come to what I call the main point section of a presentation. Here's an Autodesk animator flick of a typical mechanical assembly. How quickly, how easily can I get an idea that is in my head and publish it? Now, I've got a blank sheet of paper here, loading up my familiar AutoCAD. I have already put in a couple of center lines that you can see here. I can go and select any command I want. I'll use the polyline command, come onto the screen, and when I click my mouse, I'll establish the endpoint of the first line. Okay, then I've got now what we call a rubber band line. As I move my, around the screen, you can see it move with me. When I click again, I will establish the endpoint. Now I can keep on clicking and draw new lines. As I move around, I'm going to be building up the profile of the cover to the brake assembly that we saw just in the last flick. Click, 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 click. I begin to break up the part, to build up the part, uh, build up the brake. Um, now we've got a 2D profile, but let's look at it in isometric. Uh, I could now go and finish off the part by drawing the other profiles. But in order to make it faster for this demo, I've got a special menu where uh, I can call up profiles I've already made that are in a layer that's been hidden. So I'll turn on the layer, and there we can see all the other profiles. Now I want to begin to turn the drawing into 3D. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use the AutoCAD Surface of Revolution command. Come down and pick it on the menu, and then pick the part. And there the part has been turned into 3D. I've kept it a three-quarter view so that we can see it in section. Now I will use the AutoCAD Mirror command to duplicate the items I've already drawn to get the two brake pads that are essential. Because what we're seeing now is what we call a wireframe. It looks like a bunch of wires. OK? But I could go and turn on perspective mode and uh, do hidden line removal and many other things. But let's see it as a solid shaded image. So what I'm going to do is now replay an auto shade image that I made previously of the brake assembly. So basically, you've seen how I've been able to get a part that was existing only in my mind and get it out and publish it so that everybody could see it in only a few minutes. You've just seen what I call a demo bite. A demo bite is a standard demo that lasts between three and eight minutes. Every seminar I give has a variety of demo bites in it. Each is quite short, so I can show a variety of concepts. By the way, did you notice in the last demo that I was actually tracing the profile? In the next demo, I want to show off one of AutoCAD's best benefits. It's so easy to program AutoCAD to design and draw automatically. Well, how do you automate a task? Well, you write a program, or you get somebody else to write a program for you. 
Let's watch a program that draws gears. First, I'm going to go over to the computer, and I'm going to erase the slide of the gears that I've got on the screen. Now, you can see I've made a special menu on the right-hand side of the screen that will help me draw gears and will input parameters such as the number of teeth, pressure angle, etc. So let's draw a gear. The first one will have 18 teeth, and all I need to do is go onto the screen and point, and I've drawn a gear. Now let's look at it in 3D, in isometric view. And I'll do another gear, this time with 12 teeth. And again, I just point on the screen and click, and now I've got two gears. But now, unlike the brake program I showed you before this time, I'm going to leave AutoCAD, shell out from AutoCAD, and run AutoShade and generate a brand new image. Now, the textbook on AutoCAD says you shouldn't do this. But like many things I do in a seminar, I'm right on the edge. OK, I do things you're not always meant to do. Um, I think the audience feels this, OK? And they love it when an expert crashes something. Ah, but aha, uh -huh, it's working. We're OK. Well, what's the point of all this? Uh, I've shown you now how you could design a gear, not in hours, but in seconds. We can go much, much faster than we could do in the paper world. Well, how did I do this? As I said, I used a program. Where did I get the program? Well, it's one of thousands of public domain and shareware programs that are available that work with AutoCAD. Where, did, where can you get programs like this? Well, you can get them from your dealers or from support organizations, or you can download them from bulletin boards like CompuServe. I want to go over what I did in that last demo. First, I showed a picture of the gears, then I drew the gears, and finally I showed a shaded image of the gears. Why did I repeat it three times? Well, I want you to always know what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to draw. Because the moment I have you following my method, I can begin to hear you say, gee, I could do that. Give me the same system and I'll do it too. In the next demo, I'm going to try and take CAD out of the engineering office and make it a tool for the whole organization, especially marketing and sales. Um, now, in Taiwan, the largest manufacturer of bicycles is a company called Pacific Cycle. They export bicycles all over the world. Uh, now, in the old days, it used to take them three or four days just to do one drawing of one bicycle. So that when a customer was visiting from overseas, during a typical visit, the customer might see only just one design. Then Pacific Cycle got AutoCAD. And with AutoCAD, they were able to reduce a design cycle down to about half a day. Then last year, Pacific Cycle went to the China Productivity Center in Taipei, Taiwan, who are also an AutoCAD training center, and asked them if they could design some software that would customize and automate the designing of bicycles. I'm just going to drop down and bring up a slide of a bicycle. OK. Here, instead of dimensions, here, instead of dimensions, what we're seeing are letters. Later on, each dimension will be each letter will be replaced by a dimension, and we'll draw a bicycle frame. In fact, on my menu, I've set up all the parameters that I need in order to draw a sport or a racing bicycle. So I'm just going to drop down and hit then hit return, and we've put in the parameters that were on the menu. Now all I need to do is choose a bracket. This time I'll choose an H70, and we've drawn a bicycle frame, all fully dimensioned. Now notice the top rail of the bicycle is flat, because this is a racing bicycle. But now let's draw another bicycle. I'm going to use the AutoCAD command, modify, and then erase window, and erase this bicycle frame. I'm going to go back to my demo menu. And this time, let's do a hiking or MX type bicycle. I'll select the kind of bicycle that I want and hit Enter. And this time, I'll pick a bracket that's a, a V65. Notice now that the top bar is sloping. And I've designed a second bicycle in seconds. But now we must finish the bicycle. So I'll go back to my special cycle menu and load the assembly menu uh, that will allow me to finish off the bicycle and put on the accessories. First, you can see that all the dimensions have been turned off. They're still there, but I've just turned off the layers that they were on. Now let's put on the accessories using the AutoCAD icon menu commands. What kind of wheel do I want? 
I'll choose, say, W5, for example. Up come the wheels. What kind of seat? I'll use an S2. For the handle, uh, this is a hiking bicycle, so we should have a raised handle. I'll do H4. And now that he knows the handle, uh, the program can also put in the front fork. Let's do the carrier. I'll we'll put one with a luggage rack, C5, and a fender, uh, F2, for example. Now all we need to do is put in the uh, crank and the pedal, and I'll do a CW5. Now let me zoom in, display, zoom window, and we'll look at the detail on a finished bicycle. I find this a very elegant solution. Manufacturing and marketing have come together. I've now shown three technical demos, but I've hardly mentioned Autodesk, which is really what I'm selling. Uh, I must show to you that if you want to do the same kind of magic, then you can't use just any products. You've got to use Autodesk products. So I'm going to show everybody, including the non-technical people, that the decision to buy Autodesk products is a good, safe, and economic one. Now, what is my method for doing this? Well, of course, it's going to be another standard demo, and I call this the commercial message. Now, in this demo, watch how I use statistics in order to get my points across. Autodesk, okay, uh, is now a $170 million company. Okay, it's one of the largest software companies in the world. There's a large industry that, that has built up around Autodesk. It's now, last year, worth at least $2 billion. Now, no other vendor in the industry can compete with this or has figures anywhere near to this mark. Well, Autodesk have 19 offices worldwide. And together, these support over 1,400 dealers. Now, that means that you can get support and service in your town, in your city, really anywhere in the world. My feeling is this. As a user, a specifier, and as a person who recommends CAD CAM products, by specifying Autodesk, I can sleep easy. We're nearly finished, but it's not quite yet time for the call to action. I must design something uh, that they can't believe possible. I must blow them away. Last year, I was in Malaysia, the largest producer of natural rubber in the world. I was giving a workshop at the Dunlop Rubber Company, Dunlop, who make truck and car tires. I was showing them how they can use AutoCAD to design production facilities and manufacturing lines, whatever. When I was there, one of their engineers came up to me and said, Teo, can you design a tire with AutoCAD? He said, it it's really difficult to do, either in 2D or 3D. Now, for example, look at the slide that I'm showing now, made with AutoCAD at the time. You notice the top of the tread, it's flat. And look at the, the word Dunlop. The letters are on the arc, but they're not curved this way, the way they should be. So at the time, here's what I said. I said, you must be joking. If you want to do that kind of work, you better get a mainframe. A while after that, I was in the Philippines, and I was giving a workshop at San Miguel. They're the largest breweries in Southeast Asia. Now, one of their engineers came up from the people, from the division that make bottles, the bottling plant. And one of the, the engineers said to me, uh, Teo, could you do something like, we want to draw the labels that go on bottles. We want to draw them in 2D. And then could AutoCAD somehow turn them into 3D so we could see what the finished bottle looks like? And then they said, uh, well, you know, ex example, uh, could we do uh, Coca-Cola bottles with AutoCAD? I think you can guess what my reply was to that. I said, you must be joking. If you want to do that kind of work, you better get a mainframe. Well, that night, I was in my hotel, and I had my portable computer, and boing, the light bulb went on. And I sat down, and I wrote a program to do just what they were asking. And I want to show you what it does. Well, here, I've drawn the word ACAD, which is short for AutoCAD. And above and below it, I've got two graphic lines. Now, let's look at it in 3D. Display, zoom, previous. OK, and you can see it's still in 3D when I'm looking at it in isometric, but the text has thickness as well. OK, now let's load up my software, Options, Map Surf, and we'll bring up the program I wrote. Now, the different options. I could take this text and put it on a horizontal cylinder or a vertical cylinder or an ellipsoid or a cone or whatever, but I'm going to use the ellipsoid, OK, which is like a football shape. 